Hello. In this practical work, you'll measure the concentration of solutions using polarimetry. First, let's introduce some useful theoretical notions. Any electrical current, which is created by an electric field, generates a magnetic field which is perpendicular to it. The magnetic field then follows the electrical field evolution. Thus, it is possible to generate either stationary or variable magnetic fields. However, according to Faraday's law, only an oscillating magnetic field can generate an electric field. This is why oscillating electric fields generate oscillating magnetic fields, which in turn create other oscillating electric fields and the sequence repeats. The collection of electric and magnetic fields, which are oscillating and self-generating while propagating in space, forms the electromagnetic wave. Light it's an electromagnetic wave. The plane in which the electric field oscillates is called polarization plane. Depending on its orientation, we can characterize light beams as polarized when the polarization planes of all light rays are parallel or non-polarized when these planes are oriented in all directions. Most natural and artificial light sources generate non-polarized light. From this, polarized light can be obtained using a polarizer. The polarization plane can rotate as polarized light passes through certain substances. The chemical species that have this ability are called optically active substances. Depending on the rotation direction, this can be classified as either levorotatory or dextrorotatory. The rotation angle depends on light's wavelength, its path distance through solution, temperature and the nature of the traversed solution. Due to this dependence between the concentration and the rotation angle, polarimetric methods are employed in clinical laboratories to determine the concentration of optically active biochemicals. One common use is to measure the glucose concentration in the urine of patients with kidney disease or diabetes. Enantiomers are chiral molecules that are mirror images of each other. Although these molecules have the same chemical formula, their biological action can be very different. For example, one isomer of thalidomide is sedative, while the other is toxic, causing abnormalities in the physiological development of an embryo or fetus. Having the same chemical formula, enantiomers cannot be identified using regular biochemical methods. Thus, their analysis is performed using polarimetry. In this work, you'll determine the concentration of some optically active substances using the polarimetric method. For this, you will use a polarimeter, a glass tube, two solutions of fructose of different concentrations, distilled water, a Berzelius glass, and paper tissues. For starting, plug the polarimeter to the power outlet. If its light source is a sodium lamp, wait 10 minutes to warm it up. Make sure the glass tube is clean and its side windows are dry. Place the empty tube in the holder and close the lid of the polarimeter. Look through the eyepiece and rotate the fine-tuning knob until you find image A. If necessary, focus the image using the sleeve. Continue to rotate the knob until you find image B. In between images A and B is located image C, corresponding to the uniform light field of minimum illumination. Read the rotation angle at this image. For reading the angle on the vernier scale, use the following steps. See which two values of the external scale are neighboring the zero mark on the internal one. Among the two, Pick the lower one, which will represent the integer value of the rotation angle. 
Then, look for a position at which the divisions on both scales are perfectly aligned. At this position, the value marked on the internal scale will represent the decimal value of the rotation angle. Read the rotation angle for the empty tube three times and record the obtained values in the table. Then, consequently fill the tube with the two studied solutions to read their corresponding rotation angles. Attention! Fully fill the tube with studied solutions to prevent trapping of air bubbles inside. If a small gas bubble is found, make sure it is trapped on the area of larger diameter of the tube during the measurement. Read the rotation angles for each solution three times and record the obtained values in the table. Attention! After each measurement, pour back the solution in its own container and rinse the interior of the tube with distilled water. Calculate the mean values of the rotation angles and their corresponding standard errors. To correct the calibration of the polarimeter, subtract the rotation with the empty tube from the values obtained with the two solutions inside. The results represent the net contribution of fructose in rotating light's polarization plane. Using these two values, calculate the concentration of the two solutions using the given formula.